Good morning friends, my name's Ted and it's great to join you for morning prayer here at Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so before we do anything else, let's pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence as revealed in your word, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. If you haven't done today's readings yet, then now is an excellent time to do so. Go on, take all the time you need. We'll be here when you get back. Our verse for today comes from our first lesson, Amos chapter 5, verse 20. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? Let's pray. Creator Spirit, Advocate promised by our Lord Jesus, increase our faith and help us to walk in the light of your presence to the glory of God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we have our trowel in hand, building the cathedral of the kingdom of heaven on earth. God is giving us directions on how to do this, where the wall should be built and what it should be made of. But what happens when it is finished? What is the end result of our labours? There is a day coming. We read about it all through the Old Testament and the New. For the people to whom Amos was prophesying in the northern kingdom of Israel, that day came pretty suddenly when the Assyrians invaded. Those in Judah to the south saw it happen to themselves later with the Babylonians. But biblical prophecy always seems to speak about more than just one event. And so we can also read into this about the final day when Christ will come again to judge the quick and the dead. So there is a day coming and Amos challenges those who are looking forward to it. He talks about how it will instead be a day of darkness, not light. A day where things just go from bad to worse. This coming day will be like that to those who ignore what is going on around them, who ignore their neighbours while they lie on their expensive beds eating expensive food. Instead, says God, let justice roll like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. To those who love God, who let the water of righteousness flow out in their lives and the lives of those around them, the day of the Lord will instead be truly wonderful. Jesus describes himself as the water of life, and in him we find the righteousness of God. When we Christians speak of justice, we don't need to put any other words in front of it. Anything we do that brings us closer to Jesus and shows the face of Jesus to those around us is the type of justice that pleases God. And when he returns on that glorious day, will he see us having done our job in building his kingdom? Let's pray. Lord of heaven and earth, lift our eyes and our hearts towards you, so that our hands may be busy in the work you have set for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanks for joining me today, friends. We'll see you again tomorrow, and in the meantime, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. May we rekindle this gift of God within us. Amen.